Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying the Prophet Micah chapter 6, that is the Navi Micha, Perak Vav. And this is Saul Weiner, the host for your podcast. In the last chapter, chapter 5, Micha discussed the time of redemption. But as is often the pattern in all the prophets, and Micha as well, he will flip back and forth from one chapter to the next between discussing punishment and discussing redemption. This chapter 6 is discussing the judgment of God and that the day of judgment when it comes it will be it's, it's, it's referred to in, in a way of, um, of, a, uh, of, a, of a case of justice like a court case where the people present their case and God presents his case. So uh, we've seen this in Hosea, we've seen this in Isaiah, both contemporaries of Micha, of this this prophet. So it shouldn't surprise us that he uses similar styles and metaphors. So let's start with verse one. Shim'una, listen please. Listen well, Esa Sher Adonai Omer, to that which God says. Kum, get up, riv et heorim. Give my case or present my argument, right, or our, or the argument before the mountains. Vitishmana hagvoz kolacha and say, speak up loud. God says, as if he's speaking to the people. Speak so that the hills, the mountains, the high places can hear you. This should remind us, of course, of what we had in the beginning of Micah in the first chapter where he in the first two chapter one where he said Hakshivi Eretz Mulah listen listen the entire world the entire earth Micah is asking the people to to address God in front of the entire world now this um, language of using riv using the word language could mean an argument but here it means the 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 arguments that's presented in court. We've seen this similar language in Hosea several times. In Hosea 4.1, chapter 4, verse 1, we see, Kiriv l'Adonayim Yoshvei where there is an argument, there is a case between God and the people that reside in the land. And we saw it also in Hosea 12, verse 3, which says, Viriv l'Adonayim Yehuda. There is an argument between God and Yehuda. There is a there is a, and it doesn't mean an argument like people argue in the streets, but the kinds of arguments that are presented in court. Shimu Harim, verse 2 says, Listen. So God tells the people to speak loud enough so that the mountains can listen, can hear. And then God turns to the mountains and says, Listen, Esri to this, to these arguments, the case that is being placed in front of God. You that are the strong foundations of the world. Because there is a, a, a case between God and his people. There is a, there is a debate. There is a discussion happening between God and Israel. Ami, God speaks. And then he expects, of course, the people to answer. What have I done to you? And what bad, evil, what difficult things have I caused to you? Anebi, answer me, God says. Look at the history. Did I not take you out of the land of Egypt? And did I not redeem you from the house of slavery? And I sent in front of you my messengers, my leaders, as Moshe, the, the, the prophet Moses, Aaron, Aaron, his brother Aaron, or Miriam, and his sister Miriam, did I not send them to lead you? Ami, my nation, Zuchorunah, don't you remember? Mayatz Balak Melach Moab, that uh, which the, the Balak, the king of Moab, attempted to do, Ume'onab also Bilam ben Ba'ar, and that which, when that king Balak, when he tried to hire, the uh, prophet Bilam, the son of Baar, to curse you, Minashitim, who came from the place of Shitim Ara Gilgal, 
and he took him all the way to the place of Gilgal. And he tried to curse you, he tried to ruin you, and I did not let that happen. I don't know why did I do all of these things, because I wanted you to see and know how righteous and how gracious I am as God to you. Did I not treat you well? Why is it that you have decided to be uh, act against me? Bamo akadem Adonai. With what should I begin coming back to God? What is it that God is the, the prophet is speaking? And now the prophet is speaking to the people and saying, This is what God says. What did I do wrong? I did everything nice. I gave you everything. I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you to the land of Israel. I I saved you from all of these calamities. So what is it that I should bring to God, the prophet says to the people? How should I bow? How should I humble myself before God? Should I humble myself and approach Him with sacrifices? With young calves to sacrifice for God? Is this what I should do? Is this how I should approach God and show my gratitude? Does God really want thousands of rams? Does He want tens of thousands of 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 of, of streams of oil as offerings to Him? Does God want me to give my firstborn child in order to expiate my sins? Does God want me to give my own child in order to? Get, achieve forgiveness for my sins is this what he wants no he gid l'cha adam the man meaning I Micah the prophet says I'm going to tell you this man will tell you matov what is good what is considered the good that God wants what does he want in exchange for having treated us so well and having done so much for us not sacrifices God doesn't need those things he's not interested in those things Certainly not interested, God forbid, in the horrible idea of giving him the children. And this person, this prophet, is going to tell you what it is that God seeks from you. He wants you to act justly. He wants you to love kindness. And God wants you to walk humbly with your God. That's what he asks from you. That's all he asks. But instead, that's not what you gave him. You might have given him the sacrifices, but that's not what he asked for. This next half of the chapter, the, the verses become, his style almost changes and it gets a little difficult to translate. But they're nonetheless extremely beautiful. And let's work our way through them. Verse 9. Kol Adonai lo'ir yikra. The voice of God is calling out to the city. In other words, God is instructing us and telling us what it is that He wants. Vitushia. And there's various translations of this word, but most of the commentaries mean, agree that it means something along the following lines. Vitushia, those that have spiritual wisdom and intelligence, yir eshemecha, they will see, or it could mean they will fear your name. They will understand that which I just told you. The people that have spiritual wisdom will understand and know that what God wants is justice and righteousness and hum humility and modesty. Shimumate, but God is calling out to the city and saying, You have you that don't understand it, at least listen to the stick of of of, of destruction. Listen to the punishments I am giving you. Umi Ada and listen to the one who has the power to mete out these punishments, which is of course only God. So God is calling out to the city. The wise people will understand it. Will understand what God is telling, what God really wants. And those that need it, unfortunately that don't learn, will get punished. But listen to those punishments. Od Haish Beit Rasha. This is verse ten. And in this verse, I'm translating it the way that Ebenezer translates. Is there still a man? Is the man, the leader of the community, the leader of the city, 
Is he still living in his house of evil, Otsros Resha, which is full of treasures that he achieved and got through wickedness, through oppression of others? Ve'efat razon zuma. Does he still have those measurements? Remember how um, Micah before and Amos before and the prophets before criticized those those dishonest businessmen who would go out and sell to the poor and give them smaller measurements. The ephah is a measurement of grain. And instead of whatever, let's say, assume today's equivalent of a pound, and every pound they gave them, they really gave them three quarters of a pound because their measurements, their scales were were dishonest. The ephah razon zuma, are those homes still full of that skinny, small, minuscule measurement which fills me so, of, which infuriates me, God says, is, the, are, is, is that, are the leaders still doing this? They still don't get it? Should I let him get away with it? Should I acquit him in this case that we're arguing? When he goes around with, with scales of, of evil, scales that are corrupt and wicked, and in his pocket he has full, he's full of stones, that are stones meant to fool. Remember, when they had a scale, they would put a, a weight on one side and the and the produce on the other side. And if they were using faulty weights in order to cheese, cheat people, should I acquit them, God says? Let's move on to verse 12. Asher ashireha malu hamas. The wealthy men of the cities, the wealthy men of the community are full of hamas. Hamas is what one person forcibly takes from another. The Yoshvah Dibru Sheker and those that reside there, they're always speaking lies and falsehoods. Ulushonamr Miyabifiyam, their tongues are just full of deceit and full of of lies. The Gam Ani Hachalesi Akosecha. If this is how you treat the poor, then I am going to strike you until I make you ill. Hashmei Malchatosecha. I will, because of your sins, I will strike you so hard that you will be stunned you will be hashmim you will be just knocked into a sense of awe and just stunned with the the anger i taught to how the punishments will be so bad that you'll eat the lotus bar but you'll never have enough you'll never be satisfied there's various translations of this word i'm going to go with the translation here of the of the radak and the Matsudos that it's referring back to the same word that Isaiah used in chapter 2, verse 9, where it says, Vayishach Adam, that God humbles man. This is as a punishment. He shames him and humbles him. So, Vayishachah is the same word. Vayishachah bikirbecha. God, God the, your, 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 your um, humbleness. So this is not referring to the people's humbleness. This is the, this is the humiliation that will be within your people. Visaseg velo taflit. You will um you will um I'm sorry. Vitaseg velo taflit. The women will get become pregnant, but they will miscarry. They will never have the baby alive. Their ba- their babies will be uh, God forbid, born as uh, stillborn, and those children that are born will end up being killed by the sword. You shall plant fields below Tiktsar and you will not harvest. You will um, crush the, uh, olives below Tasuk Shaman, but you'll never have a chance to smear the oil. You will make wine, but you'll never have a chance to drink it because the enemies will. Vishtamer, and this is because you have kept the chukos amri, the um. Or this is uh, this is uh, amri is one of the kings of Israel of the northern kingdoms, one of the, who was particularly evil, and particularly um, uh, pushed led the people astray and away from God. So over here the, actually the, the way this word Vishtamer reads the more proper way to read it is is that despite all these punishments you still don't get the message remember back in verse 9 he said he said listen to the stick listen to the punishments and to the one who is wielding those punishments 
And now God is saying, but despite those punishments, you still kept the laws of Amri. In other words, the corrupt and 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 uh, oppressive rules that Amri put in place. And all of the actions and ways of life that the house of Ahab, another evil, awful king of the northern kingdom, and you went in their ways, with their ideas, with their philosophies, those of oppression of others, in such a way that what happened, the result was that I was simply going to, to make you um, destroyed. The Yoshveh and those that live in the land become an object of, of derision, an object that people uh, uh, make, make uh, as I saw the JPS translate, hissing noises, the, those, the enemies looking, and they just look at you as, yuck, who are those people? And you, the leaders that kept going like this, are going to carry the responsibility and, uh, and for making my nation become so ashamed and so embarrassed in front of their enemies. That concludes chapter 6. Looking forward to studying chapter 7 and the end of this book of Micah together.